Amanda, hello, how are you? It's lovely to see you. Hi, Damien. Very well, thank you. How are you doing? Yeah, not bad, thanks. Not bad at all. Um, thank you so much for uh, your time today. It's really uh, great to have, have you uh, do one of these interviews with me. Um, introduce us, um, for those of uh, people who are watching who don't know who you are or what you do or where you work, just tell us a little bit uh, about that. Who are you and where do you work? So I am Amanda Millis. I am the Weddings and Events Manager at Field Place Manor House and Barns. Uh, what is it about what you do uh, that you love the most? I love my job. I miss my job terribly. I love looking after people. I love helping them and taking them through anything from inquiring right the way through to putting their dress on on their wedding day. Great. And you must have, if obviously, over the years, you've seen hundreds of weddings. Any uh, favourite moments at weddings that you're allowed to tell us about or can tell us about? <laughs> well, um, there are loads of things that have happened over the years. I've, I've had to sew a bride into a dress. I've had to cut them out. I think the most hilarious, well, not necessarily hilarious <laughs> moment um, for the bride, but I suppose something to be m memorable, um, I was in the middle of food service for main course and the bride called me over and said, Amanda, I've got a problem. And I said, what's the matter? And she dropped a lamb cutlet down her front and the lamb cutlet had bounced down her bodice and all the way down her dress, leaving gravy or, or jus all the way down, jus, jus, jus all the way down to, the, her, to her feet, basically. So I ended up getting... Um, soda water, lemon and salt and sitting under the top table while she was eating her meal, sponging her dress, getting all this gravy out, uh, which she then sat there and didn't move at all until the end of speeches, by which point it had all dried. The only people that knew that it had happened was the bride, the groom and her father and me under the top table. <laughs> wow, that is above and beyond the call of duty, I think. Oh, Going sort of under the table for the speeches, mopping up jus, not gravy. Jus. Uh, that is quite something. Uh, actually, I'm, if that's the sort of story you are able to tell me, I don't think I really want to hear the ones that you're not able to tell me <laughs> anyway, so that's fine. Um, over the years, you, you've worked, uh, you've been involved with Field Place for a long time, I know, and over the years, it must have been very difficult to balance out the busy weekends and, and evening show rounds, perhaps, with, with your personal life. How have you managed to do that over the years? Well, I'm quite lucky in that there are three of us that do wedding show around. There's Mark, who is the general manager, Eloise, who is the events assistant, and me. Um, we are lucky in that all three of us show people around and look after people. So we don't all have to be there in the evenings. We don't all have to be there first thing. Our work-life balance is quite good because we're lucky that we have really good caterers that we trust. And I suppose because we can almost come and go as we want to around the business when we haven't got a wedding and as long as we look after the inquiries and we answer everybody in an appropriate time scale then it's great because it means that if my husband has two days off in the week then I can have the same days off as him and it's it's a lot nicer it's, it's in a way it's quite nice not having weekends off because the shops are always too busy normally and and it's quite nice to be able to free go to go to the allotment and just and just chill yeah, I mean, it does have its benefits sometimes working at the weekends. Other, the daily, the weekly chores get done during the week rather than at the weekend, and, and that can work for sure. Uh, but yeah, I guess having a team really helps because you can spread that workload around. Definitely. And I know it's the same at, at most venues, of course, as well, with especially busy ones like yours. Um, if you had to pick three things that you guys have done at Field Place to propel it to the success it has seen, what would those th three things be? Well, the first would be outside the front of the two barns. There used to be a pitch and putt in many, many days gone by. The pitch and putt was then turned into just a lawn, so it didn't have any activity on it. And then in 2018, it was turned into a landscape wedding garden. It's phenomenal now. It's absolutely beautiful. It's got a great big wisteria walk. It's got a bandstand for getting married outside. Having open air ceremonies has completely changed the level of, of summer weddings. So people just want to get married in the fresh air. So I guess that's the first thing. The second thing would be expanding the team in that there was only myself and Mark 
for about the first 18 months of me working at Field Place. Now we have Eloise as well, which is fabulous. Um, the third thing, without sounding too cliched, I suppose is being part of TWIA because the journey that we've been on from 2018 to now has really shown our customers that we have changed. We have done more than just put paint on walls, put chandeliers in ceilings. We've really gone for it in terms of invest in all the marketing and get everything right front of house customer facing, but as well as making sure that the support that is there to look after the customers is, is stronger. And did your um, growth of the team, was that born out of an increased number of weddings or did, it, did you increase the level, the, the, the number of people in your team in order to increase the, the number of weddings you were doing? Which way round did that come? It came initially because there were so many more inquiries. Um, and as much as we are very customer focused, so if there is a wedding, we're not in the office watching it happen from a window. We're involved in it from the moment that the stationery goes out first thing in the morning, right the way through to speeches. But then to try and coordinate the level of inquiries that came in over the weekend, we couldn't do both. We couldn't be in both places. So it initially started because there was a lot of interest. And as the garden grew and everything happened, I suppose, it was, it was really critical to get back to people really quickly. Um, secondly, there was a need to increase business. There's always a need to increase business. So to have, to have Eloise on the team was phenomenal because it's meant that we can double our show rounds, we can do more in the week, we can always cover the business properly. Yeah, and it's so interesting to hear that you um, invested heavily in the landscape gardening side of things because the outside of the venue really does, you know, sell it, right? And couples want to see a vision of what they might be able to do at their wedding, you know, weather permitting, whether that's a ceremony or even just drinks and photos. Um, so it's great to hear that that investment has paid off, you know, many, many times from the sounds mm. of it. Um, obviously, there's a, a situation at the moment that's affecting all of us in every way imaginable. Um, the coronavirus and COVID-19 uh, situation, of course, Obviously, uh, lockdown is easing now and you're getting back towards showing couples around for their weddings for next year and beyond, I'm sure. What um, things have you put in place to enable you to show your prospective couples around safely? Um, and when are you able to start uh, showing people around again? So we took the approach that when the estate agents opened and started doing virtual show rounds and actual selling, I suppose, of property, that we could do the same thing as long as we did it safely. So when we show people around, we meet them at the front gate, we let them in, they park very close to the house, they haven't got to touch any door, they can just come in, walk straight round, there's a route that we've got ready so they haven't got to worry about holding anything or dealing with handles or, or anything at all, as well as having um, the hand sanitizer in each space. The moment they walk in, I point it out, they know what they're doing before they walk in, they're sent information before they arrive. So they are completely confident of who they're meeting. I know a little bit about them. I know what their wedding plans hope to be. So I can talk about which spaces work for them a little bit more efficiently, I suppose, from the beginning. Um, and then I make sure that once I've shown them round, because I probably talk a bit too much, that I leave them to it. So I let them then wander around both the barns the garden the appointments are spaced out with, with a gap of an hour in between each one so should the first appointment rather than being 60 minutes end up being 90 it doesn't matter because the, the appointments don't collide so they absolutely get a hundred percent of me or of my colleague then it's then it's much nicer because it's calm and no one feels rushed great and what about other things that, that, that I know venues love to do and find very useful things like wedding fairs for instance or, or showcases any plans for those in the in the near future well we had to cancel the showcase due to all of this which was a great shame um, we have a wedding fair planned for the 4th of October but we will see what's allowed with government advice uh, if we can't do that then we might try and do something on our website so that we can tie in the local suppliers that would have come to that so we can start showcasing people a little bit more and helping each other locally 
um, I know our bride and grooms love coming to wedding fairs because they love meeting people and it's great looking at a website but it's not the same as talking to somebody face to face certainly then if that one doesn't come off for whatever reason then the next one would be in January just after Christmas sure yeah I mean it, it is it is interesting I mean we do need feels like we do need some guidance from government regarding events of any type and of course a wedding fair is an event um, the one meter thing should help but but uh, yeah, it's still all sorts of logistics. And as I say, you, you'll want to know that, have that guidance from the government where you can make any sort of firm plans. But, uh, but at least couples are wanting to, they're, they're, they're getting engaged. They want to come and uh, talk to you, look at the venue uh, and your, I'm sure, order book or bookings are, uh, are filling up for, for next year. Uh, is, that, is that right? How's next year looking for you guys? Absolutely stonking. Stonking. It's fantastic. Next year's dates are fantastic but there is still availability midweek may is quite a good month for availability the summer as in the summer holidays and people need to get ready get sorry get married because their children are off school is really really busy but it's always really busy so that for us isn't too much of a change april next year is fantastic absolutely the best april we will we will have ever have had it, but there is options. There's certainly ways of not necessarily having to do it at peak season. If you want to still get married next year, you don't have to do it at the peak of the summer. Some people hate being hot. So autumn weddings, winter weddings, there's plenty of availability. And how have you found the, the whole process of postponing your 2020 bookings to next year or beyond? Has that been straightforward for you? We've been very lucky because the registrars in West Sussex have stayed open all the way through. Um, I know that registrars in um, Hampshire haven't always been available. So there have been people that are in other, other counties that haven't been able to talk to registrars that couldn't make decisions. But our registrars have been phenomenal all the way through. And I suppose because people have communicated via the events inbox it's been really interesting to find out what their thought process is when they want to think about postponing to they don't have to go exactly a year ahead they could just go six months and then some of them have gone from october weddings to april weddings with the hope of getting married in the garden they would never have done that in october so um, yeah have you found that you've been able to accommodate all your postponed bookings from 2020 and all your new bookings for 2021? Yes. Yeah. It's harder at the moment for availability on Saturdays in summer, but then people are either changing a date and going with a Friday or a Sunday, or they're thinking about 2022 if they want a specific Saturday within the summer holidays. And how have you found your couple's uh, reaction to the, this process? How, have they, uh, how, has it been easy to deal with from your point of view? I mean, obviously, you know, I don't want you to spill any beans or name any names, but uh, has it generally been okay for you guys? The ones that have been logical, that did it very, very early, have been, they've all been brilliant, to be fair. A couple have been quite emotional, an awful lot of tears and an awful lot of of guidance i suppose so that they don't feel like they're hitting the, into this on their own um i i do feel that the registrars have been the godsend because they've been so patient and they've dealt with people so fairly so we've been very lucky in west sussex i think it's good to hear i know there's been a lot of pain and and often venues get a bit of bad press or certainly the venues seem to be the ones who have had some bad press in uh, over the last few months with um with you know stringent adherence to terms and conditions and couples getting all upset and of course things like wedding insurance not paying out so it's just mm -hmm. lovely to hear that you've just worked hard with your couples and for your couples to make it work for them and that they have understood that it's affecting you as well so it's a happy story and I'm, I'm really glad about that because it does mean that those couples can get married in the venue they want to get married in uh, with you and, and you guys are all and the team are very much part of that that's part of the reason they've chosen field place i have no doubt so uh, it's great news i want to take you back a couple of years now or a little while and 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 just ask you a little bit about your involvement with the wedding industry awards uh, i'm particularly interested in what it was that attracted you to the awards in the first place i was very keen to develop field place and, and get it on the map at that point field place was quite a local venue the postcode radius of people that booked was very very local 
um, and I really wanted to expand that so that we went to South London to all over the place. Um, by being involved in in Twia meant that we then became much more kind of out there, which was much better. So in year one, when we entered for 2018, and then got through to being highly commended in the region, that was a revelation because I didn't really know what I was doing in my first year of entering Twia, and I didn't really understand how to encourage and how to enhance people to want to vote. So then as the journey has gone on through 2019, when we were regional finalist and then regional winner, I kind of knew what I was doing and I knew how to gently say, come on, please, you just vote for us. It will take you five minutes. Um, but then encouraging the, the weddings right the way from the beginning. But they also saw it as a progression. So they saw that in 2018, we were regional highly commended. 2020, we were regional winner. And then to win last year regionally and then at the national was amazing. And you sort of alluded to it just then, but how has it helped your business over the years? In what way, I mean, has it driven more inquiries and more bookings or, or what? How has it helped? Both. To have the logo on all our merchandise, all our marketing on our website, on my email footer, everywhere, people see that and think, oh, that's really good. And there's lots of venues locally that are barns or that are hotels. A few of them have entered Twitter, but none of them obviously have got the national winner, which I'm quite happy about. Um, but we, I think, have, have shown the people locally and their friends and their friends on Facebook and on Instagram that we have got better and better and better as each year has gone. And without a doubt, uh, it has increased our sales. In fact, the, year, the day after the regional final in 2019, when we won the regional winner, the next morning we had a wedding, which was quite hard going off the wine <laughs> the night before. Um, and we were setting up all the tables and a group of four walked in and said, we saw that you won the award last night. Can you show us around? And that is no word of a lie. I was a little bit, <laughs> okay and I just showed them straight around and they booked so I mean that can't be more testament to it. I'm interested to look forward now a little bit to 2021 and beyond and for your advice uh, to what other venue owners or other wedding businesses in general could do um, to help them ride out this situation and drive their business through into 2021 and beyond and continue to grow. I, I was always told many years ago that if you personalise rather than generalise, people will believe in you a lot more. And I think we have an approach that as much as we could do four weddings in one week or five weddings in one week, that each wedding is completely standalone. And that I think is your best message, is if you can look after people properly, take absolute care of them, reply to inquiries and, and be available on the phone, as much as you possibly can, have a cracking website. So I think doing all the things that we've done to make life easier for the customer that might be potentially booking the venue will make it an easier process for them to decide whether or not they want to invest time to come and have a show around and hopefully have their wedding with us. Amanda, thank you so much for your time. Uh, it's been so interesting talking to you and to hearing all about Field Place and the personal touch that you and the team um, place on it uh, and th the way you look after your, your couples. Um, I'm really, as I say, I can't wait for weddings to be back up and running for everybody, but especially for you guys. Um, thank you so much for your time today. And we wish you and the team the very best of luck in the future. Thank you so much. It's been lovely to talk to you.